Now our mission to the wasteland has been unbelievably lucrative. Look how much science and money we have. 3.5 million funds and almost 2,000 science. Now that isn't actually enough to upgrade the R&D center. Well it is enough to upgrade it, but we'd be left pretty skint afterwards. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head into the administration building and we're gonna sort out our third strategy. Of course we completed wasteland probes. We got a lot of money from it, but Really, it was quite a big gamble. Um, with the uh, penalties, as you can see, almost 2 million funds. If one of those probes had failed, which when that first parachute caught on fire, I thought that they might, uh, then we would have lost a lot of money and a lot of reputation. We staked our entire space program on that strategy, which is kind of the purpose of uh, the strategy, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, I think what we want to do is upgrade to boldly go. And what that will do is that will cost us quite a bit of money, but it gives us 200,000 funds when science is transmitted or recovered from new celestial bodies. And 100% funds to milestone gains for bodies other than Kerbin, but that means solitude. And we haven't gone to Malice yet, so I think that's certainly going to be worth doing. So we're going to grab that, accept the strategy. So now we're doing to boldly go free. So it costs a bit of money to upgrade it, but now there we go. We're going to get a bunch of money every time we transmit stuff from new celestial bodies. Which means we're going to get a lot of money with all our milestones, etc. going to Malice. And hopefully that will give us enough money to then be able to upgrade our R&D center. And then we'll decide what strategy we're going to go for next. So, heading back to Tribute 1, we need to adjust our orbit so that we encounter the moon of the wasteland, Malice, which has been formed, as I mentioned in the last episode, after Minmus and the moon collided, which created this vast ring system around the wasteland and makes it look uh, pretty funky, I'm not going to lie. However, it's at this point that we discover a pretty terrible problem with our space probe. The probe that we have on Tribute 1 doesn't have any reaction wheels, and we didn't put any reaction control thrusters on the spacecraft. So we have no way of orienting it. We could orient it before because the atmospheric probes had probe cores which did have reaction wheels, so while they were still on board, we were actually able to orient it. But now we are completely unable of controlling the attitude of our spacecraft. So yeah, uh, not good. What we have to do in the end is use the fact that our center of mass is slightly offset from our center of thrust and fire our nuclear engine to spin the spacecraft up and then just fire the engine when we're roughly near our prograde marker. And that does actually manage to just about get us an encounter with Malice, but my intentions of landing on Malice, uh, yeah, not going to happen now, considering our spacecraft is essentially flying blind. Right, here we are at Malice. Not in the most graceful manner, considering I forgot to put any reaction wheels or reaction control thrusters on this spacecraft, but hey, you know, you live and learn. So let's grab ourselves a temperature scan. Uh, just a default message, instrument read zero, it's as if it were in a vacuum. See, people haven't been particularly busy writing reports for uh, for Malice. The gear feels right at home here. Analyze magnetosphere. This moon has no magnetic activity this high up, or the instrument is out of action. Considering how much we've been spinning the spacecraft, it wouldn't surprise me if it were. There we go, initiated the first flyby of Malice. Um, yes. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get into orbit. Maybe, you know, maybe, with the rotation of the spacecraft. Uh, if you're wondering, Malice, the reason why it's sort of half greeny, half moony, uh, is actually because this was created when Minmus crashed into the moon, as you can see on a little information thing here. So, uh, yeah, it's sort of half Minmus, half moon, which is pretty freaking awesome, I must say. Anyway, let's uh, time warp ourselves down nearish to the surface, and then we'll try and do a retrograde burn um, when we're roughly over uh, the retrograde marker. There we go. Okay, we actually don't have any probe control right now. Uh, oh, hello, Malice. Wonderful. Um, yeah, we don't have any probe control. That is a problem. Where is Solitude right now? Uh, it's there. Okay, when are we going to get probe control? Not anytime soon. Ah, wonderful. That's absolutely glorious. Okay, let's wait until we get probe control. Okay, boom, we've got probe control. And first of all, let's actually transmit all the science that we have right now. Um, wherever on earth it is. I should have just transmitted it the moment we got it, really, but we weren't in sunlight, so... There we go. 
go. That's not quite. Yeah, we're not in orbit. <laughs> we're very definitely not in orbit. But we'll just keep burning whenever we're over our retrograde marker, and hopefully we can sort of get ourselves into roughly an orbit. We've got plenty of delta V, so we can do this, um, provided we have enough time to do it. We're sort of knocking about. Yeah, we're knocking a decent amount of meet, uh, delta V off of our velocity each time we do that. But uh, this might take a little while. So we go back to our rather, well, certainly very Kerbal way of getting a probe into orbit, just spinning around, gradually getting faster and faster and faster each time we fire the engine. Um, thanks to persistent rotation as well, we can't just time warp to stop the rotation, but uh, we do actually manage to get ourselves into a relatively stable orbit. The mystery goo turns a pale green and then back to a light grey. It's acting funny in these parts. Well, we'll transmit that. There we go. I was actually intending to try and land on Malice, but considering we can't orient our spacecraft, uh, that's going to be nigh impossible. So I guess we're not doing that now. Um, I've kind of lost where the temperature things are. Uh, oh, there they are. Yeah, if we can actually select them. There we go. Review data. We'll transmit that. What we need to do is get up to Apoaps and... Um, that's ah, really difficult to select stuff now that we're spinning. And the spin's only going to get worse. Like, the more we fire the engine, um, not the folks in the lab will be thrilled to know space is still cold, even close to Archangel. Uh, but yeah. Um, the spin's only going to get worse because we have no way of controlling it. There are no reaction wheels on this space probe. So, yeah, a bit awkward. But what are you going to do? Review data. There we go. Transmit that. I believe that's all the data we got from high over Malice, but once we get low over Malice, we can analyze the gamma rays and stuff as well. So, here we are. So, currently we're on a collision course. Uh, we're going to get ourselves up to Apple Apps, and then we're going to try and burn on Prograde and see if we can lift that up a little bit. There we go! <laughs> the idiot's guide to uh, to getting into orbit, but uh, yeah, I'm glad we actually had enough Delta V to be able to do that. Problem is, um, I think, no, Legacy 1 doesn't have the same problem, because Legacy 1 doesn't have any, um, any probes on board, it's just the space probe, so I don't know. Legacy 1 is a different design, of course, so I'm pretty sure it doesn't have this problem, otherwise we wouldn't be able to orientate it at all. Anyway, let's get ourselves uh, into low space around Malice. Look at that. You've got bits of Minmus splayed out all over the surface of uh, the moon. It's pretty damn cool. So I've got, got like a massive impact crater. It'd be pretty epic to explore it, but uh, yeah, unfortunately we can't land on it because I'm an idiot. So <laughs> right, here we go. Temperature scan. The monitor seems to be overly warm when the light from Archangel hits it. We'll transmit that. Uh, we do have enough electric charge, right? We're still in sun, right? Uh, no, not quite. Oh no, we are still quite, just about in sunlight. We can do the rest of it. This confirms that you're still in a vacuum and there are no surprise atmospheres present. We'll transmit that. And our final mystery goo observation. The goo feels right at home here. We'll transmit that. Transmit data. There we go. Gamma ray experiment. Gamma ray experiment data required. Bit boring, but you know. People, you need to get into that Discord. Get writing me some more science reports. Analyze magnetosphere. Waving the magnetometer around yields less of a result, less of a result than applying directly to the head. Fair enough. Get ourselves a bunch more science. I think we're getting money from this as well. Yeah, loads of money. Pretty damn awesome. To boldly go should have given us a bit of money as well. And there we have it. Wonderful. So. Yeah, this is where Tribute 1's going to stay, it looks like, because we have no way of changing the orientation of the spacecraft. Um, so, yeah, I was intending to try and land it on the surface, and we have more than enough Delta V to do that, but uh, unfortunately, due to my incompetence, we have no way of actually orientating the spacecraft. But hey, what are you going to do? Still, this has been a very successful mission, all things concerned. Like, um... All things considered, all things considered. We landed three probes on the wasteland and we got a probe into orbit around Malice. So we didn't manage to land on Malice, which was an optional objective anyway. So honestly, I think this mission has been an amazing success. 
However, we still don't actually have quite enough money to upgrade our R&D center and have enough money spare to, uh, well, make me comfortable. So we're actually heading back over to Talos 1. We've got two research labs full of data, which we've just transmitted. Uh, so that gives us about a thousand science. But now we're actually starting to run low on data. So what we need to do is send the Griffin Z lander down to the surface of Guardian, grab ourselves some more scientific reports, and then we can bring them back up so we can continue doing our orbital research. Because Talos 1 is producing a hell of a lot of science, but we do need to keep topping it up uh, with experimental reports now and then. And what better time to go visit those alien ruins that we've seen multiple times at the North Pole, which definitely aren't terrain glitches. And as we close, we see that actually it isn't one central pyramid, but three towering obelisks uh, rising out of the surface of the North Pole. Really, really quite interesting and rather spooky, I do say. And as we zoom out, we look at the rather funky terrain. It actually appears to be some kind of map or perhaps some kind of instruction set, perhaps left by a long dead civilization, a guide to escape from the solar system. Who knows? These are just speculations. But we land on the surface and we begin getting ourselves some experimental science reports whilst uh, taking a look at the rather spooky scenery. So, welcome to the spooky alien ruins. I mean, look at that. These look like... Oh, maybe it's some kind of map, some kind of star map to a nearby solar system. Perhaps it's a guide. The guide to the warp drive. Maybe that's how we're getting all our scientific research from just taking temperature scans and such. Maybe these ruins. This is the key to interstellar travel, to saving Kerbal Kind. Who knows? But at the moment they're just a bunch of creepy ruins that definitely aren't just terrain glitches. Right, uh, we've got a bunch of new science messages since we last went to Guardian, so let's have a look at some of them. With no atmosphere to regulate the already erratic temperatures, we've seen that lit sides scorch and dark sides shiver. Atmospheric pressure scan. Guardian lacks an atmosphere, but not a heart. Aww. Mystery girl observation. It feels right at home. It's even building a cozy cabin. Seismic scan. Seismic sensors show that this moon has little geologic activity. You wonder if detonating a fuel tank would somehow remedy the situation. I'm sure it would. Material study. This sample seemingly smile back at you. Aww. Guardian's a nice moon, isn't it? Right, let's get uh, Obzi out, because we want to level him up so he can be the one to plant the flag, because of course we have a contract to do that. Plant a flag on Guardian, there we go. I'm trying to finish up uh, as many things as we can before we head over to... Uh, before we head over to Demise. Take a surface sample. An old plate of metal is buried underneath the soil. It does not like you. Alright, okay. <laughs> And EVA report. A calm voice enters your head, along with countless rays of energy bombarding your frontal lobes. And let's plant ourselves a flag. So apparently we haven't actually landed in the subtle cracks before, which is interesting, to say the least. Um, I swear we sent data from here back to Solitude before, but apparently not. Griffin Z. Subtle. Actually, I'm going to say Alien Ruins. <laughs> there we go. Is it a map? Or a a warning. Ooh. S spooky. Spooky. But without establishing a permanent base of operations here at the North Pole, there's a limit on how much research we can really do. So we go around taking all of the experimental science reports out of all the various different instruments, and then we proceed to put them into the main pod and store them there. And then what we do is we take all the reports again, because of course we have multiple science labs upon Talos 1. So we're trying to get multiple copies of the same experiments so that we can put one copy into one lab and then we can put all the other copies into the second lab, because you can actually run the same experiment through two labs, but you need to have multiple copies of it. Um, but that means we can basically fill up both of our science labs on the station with plenty of data to research. We do actually have a third um, lab on the station, but we don't actually have enough scientists in our space program to make use of that. Uh, certainly not yet. But since we're at the North Pole, we just launch up and we can pretty much launch straight into Talos 1's orbit, which is much nicer than landing on the equator, because then in the time it takes for Talos 1 to orbit round, the surface of Guardian actually moves since it rotates, and we have to do a big inclination change, but uh, thankfully we don't have to do that. And yeah, it's probably for the best, considering I didn't do the most efficient descent uh, since I was trying to land in a relatively specific location, so we're a little short on fuel. But uh, we managed to get ourselves an intersect relatively easily and we leave the surface for 
well, returning certainly at another date. And there we are, just arriving at Talos 1 with our wonderful bounty of science and some money on board since of course we completed a few contracts while we were on the surface. We do actually have some Kerbals to rescue from orbit of Guardian but they're all in equatorial orbit so we'll do that at some point later. Um, we'd need to dock with Talos 1 to get more fuel to do that anyway so we'll do it at a later date. We just come in. Uh, thankfully, I remembered to top up the monopropellant tanks before we left Talos 1. And there we go. Going for a relatively bouncy but relatively quick docking. And there we are. We just top up all of our science labs with data. And as you can see, there's nothing, there's no space left for uh, data. So they're going to continue researching at about 10 science per day. And in another month or so, we should have another thousand science ready to transmit back to the space center. So while they're getting on with that, we're going to go head over to our other space probe. Legacy 1, which is currently en route to Demise, which if you remember is the current name for EVE. And since this is a very similar design of Space Probe to Tribute 1, as you can see, yeah, uh, we have the same orientation problem. Thankfully, we have an engine that can actually gimbal. The nuclear engine, though, that can't gimbal. That's why we couldn't control uh, Tribute 1 earlier. But we still have a little bit of fuel left in this uh, upper stage, which we use to actually get it into orbit. So, thankfully, we can use that to orient the spacecraft and get ourselves a very precise encounter with Demise after a little bit of wiggling because of course we can only move the spacecraft attitude while we're firing the engine and we have very very limited fuel left in that stage and we can't transfer fuel from the next stage because of course the nuclear engine only uses liquid fuel whereas that service propulsion engine uses liquid fuel and oxidizer. So we can't transfer fuel from an upper stage into the lower stage. Um, we're limited by how much fuel we have. So we need to essentially uh, do all of our maneuvers and attitude using this engine and then we'll just use the nuclear engine for the final burn to get ourselves into orbit. But as we arrive in high orbit of demise we get ourselves a wonderful bounty of science and a lot of funds completing a number of explore demise contracts. And there we are. So now it's time to set ourselves a maneuver, get a few world firsts of course and a lot of money thanks to our to boldly go strategy. And we now need to plan our uh, maneuver to get ourselves into orbit. We want to get ourselves into a nice uh, relatively circular polar orbit because we actually do, do have a surface scanner on this probe, not because I wanted to particularly scan the surface for ore or resources, but just because you get a bit more science from that. Uh, we had space on the probe so I thought I might as well do it. As you can see we're just orienting the spacecraft now. We need to very, very carefully, <laughs> very, very um, aware of how little fuel we have left in this engine, uh, orienting ourselves along that uh, maneuver node. And now we're just descending towards the surface, the wonderfully just horrific <laughs> surface of the Mars. Look how far this planet has fallen. Unfortunately, since we do have an offset center of mass, we start rotating as soon as we run out of fuel on the surface propulsion uh, stage, and we start doing the same thing we did at Malice. Right, let's take some science readings. The ground is burning, the air is burning, everything is burning! Let's transmit that, even if we can't get this thing into orbit, uh, which I kind of hope we can. We should be able to at least get some funny reports and a decent amount of science. The instrument reads zero, it's as if it were in a vacuum. We transmit that. Oh, there we go, we're firing the engine again. Thank God we uh, weren't intending to land this thing anywhere. Uh, yeah, it is an orbiter and an orbiter only, and uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm good we didn't invest in anything else. The goo has started a labour strike. It demands better working conditions. Fair enough. Uh, I can't really blame it. Yeah, this close to Archangel. Uh, how hard are our radiators working? Uh, not too hard. They are certainly working, but they're not being pushed to the limit just yet. Uh, nobody submitted anything for the gamma ray experiment. That's to be expected. The KSP interstellar experiments are a little bit more niche. Um, although people do seem to like the gas chromatography spectrum Trometry, well, the one with the really long name. <laughs> it seems to like that experiment quite a bit. Analyze magnetosphere, there we go, and we'll also do a material study. Once that's, uh, oh, hello, we've run out of uh, electric charge. Oh, let's, uh, yeah, let's get back up to full electric charge and then we'll try again. The engine should help with that. Oop. There we go. We'll grab the material study before we um, head out of the, uh, there we go, no interesting message for that one. Yeah, before we head out of the biome, because I think we're, yeah, we're gaining altitude now, so just want to grab it to make sure. We've got some world firsts, though. We actually entered orbit of Demise, have we? Oh, look at that, we're in orbit. 
Not very low orbit yet. Um, I don't think we're low enough to activate the scanner yet. Oh! No, no, we are, apparently. Okay, it doesn't have to be a circular orbit to scan for resources. So, there you go. Um, I thought it had to be a circular orbit to study, but apparently not. A new resource node has been discovered and added to your map. Harvest some first. Okay. Well, that's cool. Then we get science for it, though. Oh, perform orbital survey. That's it. Ah, there we go. Stable polar orbit between 45 kilometers and 1,500 kilometers. Okay. Yeah, uh, so to do an orbital survey, uh, we have to be in a stable orbit. So I was sort of right. We're spinning faster and faster now. <laughs> oh, God, this is such a weird way to get a probe into orbit, isn't it? Have we got full electric charge yet? Uh, not quite. Our solar panels aren't particularly well aligned, but we can't really rotate the spacecraft very well. So, yeah. Look at that. This close to demise, and our solar panels aren't aligned correctly. Demise? This close to Archangel, I meant. That's just crazy. Still, we get electric charge each time we fire the engine, so we should have enough to be able to transmit that data. That's the hope, anyway. So, after about 10-15 minutes of spinning around uncontrollably and firing our engine when we're near the retrograde marker, we get ourselves into a relatively stable polar orbit. Thankfully, it is stable enough to perform our orbital survey and get wonderful resource data on the surface of the Mayas. Not that we're really planning to build any colonies here. I mean, it's a hellhole. Why would we go... <laughs> further in to the solar system when we're trying to escape it. Um, we might build colonies on some of the outer planets in future, but uh, I highly doubt it. Anyway, now we finally have enough money to upgrade our R&D center and get some new techs. So, with the amount of science we've stockpiled, I'm like a kid in a candy shop with all of these wonderful techs. Improved nuclear power? Very tempting. See, we can research a lot of stuff, but we're not actually going to have the money to buy the parts once we have, which is uh, kind of interesting. There's a lot of nuclear stuff up here, improved nuclear propulsion. We certainly want to get very heavy rocketry. That's that's a given. We're grabbing that. So we can, we can barely afford to just research this one node. Wow. Okay. No, uh, no, lathing. Okay, this is a lot of stuff from USI. I'm kind of spoiled for choice, not going to lie. Uh, hypersonic flight. Certainly worth grabbing. Advanced motors. We're going to need to grab most of this stuff. Uh, but advanced science tech? Yeah, that's for sure. Gravioli detector. Yeah, definitely. ISIUs, bunch of stuff. Surface drills. Specialized science tech. We get bigger dishes. We get some lasers for transporting power. We get cryonic freezing chambers. Which is pretty freaking cool. Yep, we'll grab ourselves that. Ion propulsion? Uh, I don't know, maybe. Advanced unmanned tech? Yep. Sort of have a repeat of the bloody Legacy 1 Tribute 1 fiasco where we <laughs> can control their attitude. Um, do, 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 do. A bunch of communication stuff. Communicatrons is very tempting. Got a bunch of power stuff. Advanced solar technology? Tempting once again. Heat management. Uh, Short term habitation? I'm tempted by this because this gives us a bunch of Ranger um, Expedition Rover parts. I think we want to go for that and then grab ourselves advanced motors. And that means we can make some better mobile bases. Uh, just looking at some of the later techs. Yeah, I think that's going to be a good idea. I'm saying that massive relay antennas might also be a good idea. Ooh, many choices, many choices, many choices. But I think, yeah, advanced motors, and we'll work on building some slightly more advanced uh, mobile bases. And there we go. Uh, if we go have a look at Talos 1 and Hyperion, though, I think we might actually might have a bunch more signs ready to transmit as well. So let's go do that and then see if we can research some more techs. So, after the Legacy 1 mission, we've accumulated another thousand science from Talos 1, and we head over to Hyperion, the smaller station on the surface of Nemesis, and we've accumulated another 500 science from that, allowing us to unlock another two relatively useful nodes. So now all we have to do is work on the infrastructure around Solitude, complete some more contracts and the like, to get enough money to actually buy all of these parts. But that'll be in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I do hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.